Hi guys. Hey guys, we're back in Hi. Singapore. So a while back, Vitaly and I made a quick stopover in Singapore and boy was it good to be back! Singapore has so much to offer and it can be very confusing if you only have say 48 hours to blitz through but here are some super local, super famous food and shopping and activity highlights I can highly recommend all of you check out if you ever visit our famous little lion city. First up, of course, Marina Bay Sands. Who hasn't heard of it yet? But a really great way to see MBS and the surrounding area is to actually head up East Coast Park, grab a couple of rental bikes and take that scenic cycle straight down to MBS and coast around enjoying the amazing views. Whilst you're at East Coast Park, might as well fuel up for that 30 minute cycle down to MBS by first stuffing your face at the East Coast Lagoon Food Village like we did. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy in Singapore food! Yay! <laughs> Cha Kue Tiao and braised duck rice, ooh la la, and also barbecue fried chicken wings and braised pig trotters and bakute ha 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 <laughs> Singapore Cha Kue Tiao, one of our local cuisine highlights. Flat rice noodles, stir fried with soy sauce, garlic, chilli, cockles, lap chiong, fish cake and more. Nothing will ever replace Cha Kue Tiao. <laughs> After enjoying the local feast, it's an easy coasting ride down to the Marina Bay Sands area. Oh, such a nice cycle here and it's so incredible, it's so beautiful. That's the Singapore flyer right there by the way. We found it so much more fun to check out MBS and all its happenings on the bikes this way so definitely highly recommend. If you stay past sunset, I'm pretty sure you'll also find the nighttime lit up Singapore city skyline pretty impressive too. The awesome possum shopping hotspots to stop by are Bugis Village and Sim Lim Square. Conveniently, they're right next to each other. Bugis Village is always where I head to to satisfy my cravings for that Singapore hot city vibe, you know? Ground floor is where you'll find all the quirky fun souvenirs. Even sometimes those touristy Singapore t-shirts which I always find good fun. I wanna I love Singapore t-shirt but this guy said I need to buy like a Singapore 65 like basketball jersey or something. Why would I want that? <laughs> Justify yourself. <laughs> and of course, fun street foods of all interesting and tantalizing varieties. What do you want to eat, darling? I am full. <laughs> we haven't I, stopped eating in Singapore. Actually, my doctor called me and said, I need to increase my cholesterol. <laughs> it's get low. <laughs> yes, so we increase his cholesterol in Singapore. <laughs> but there's so much good stuff to eat. <laughs> like these kaya balls. Assorted Chinese cookies and biscuits, traditional crispy chewy pancakes, they call them apam balik pancakes, and so cheap, and so many different flavors. At the back, there's even fruit vendors selling durians, grapes, and something they call tao mei ping guo, strawberry apples. Mm. The second story offers a world of teen-targeted consumer paradise. Yay! Shopping heaven! <laughs> so the deal is, I love coming here. This is the second level. So I used to hang out here a lot as a kid and like buy a lot of clothes here, shop here, makeup, shoes, whatever. It's all cheap, it's all fun. It's very nice. This place has this knockoff Harajuku vibe that's pretty funny to immerse in every once in a while and often some quirky discoveries such as this. Not quite my colour, I have to say. <laughs> and then there's always the mandatory stop at Simlim Square, just a four minute walk behind Bugis Village. Tell the world how happy you are to be back okay. at Simlim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are now in Sim Lim Square in Singapore. This is Vitali's favourite place for electronics and gadgets and tech stuff. 
So basically, he's very down on Funan, the digital mall. He says that this place is so much more relevant. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this place has been around since I was a kid, so it's been around forever. <laughs> this is where Singaporeans from my generation come if they need to like resolve some tech thing or buy some tech thing for like a decent price. <laughs> Some sellers here aren't above scamming tourists especially though, so always shop here with caution. Whilst you're in this area, don't forget to check out the super famous bean curd and soya bean milk shop that has been around since 1955. So we are here at Rojo Bean Curd in Singapore, uh, somewhere off uh, Short Street near Soligi. And uh, this is Vitali's favourite place for soya bean milk and fried stuff. <laughs> Do you know what you're gonna get? Yeah. Just you tell, yeah, butterfly. Once upon a time, the vendors peddled their silky smooth tau hui on the streets out of a makeshift stall. Seventy plus years later, this family business is still a local institution. Yeah. Uh, later, uh, why is he ordering so many things? I didn't give him permission to order so many things. <laughs> Same like 10 years ago. <laughs> what are you talking about? You were not here 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still same, right? He was only here like, I don't know, 6 years ago maximum. <laughs> not 10 years ago. <laughs> now I'm gonna try soya bean milk plus grass jelly for the first time. Mm, very smooth and interesting with the mix of the chin chow inside. Not bad. How's it? Very nice. Check out Vitali's happy food face as he dips in his crunchy yotiao dough fritter into the soya bean milk and enjoys it. <laughs> At this point, you need to know about another super famous local specialty Tanjong Ru Pao's cute mini chasu pao's. How's it? Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So this fat guy, his favourite stuff is this uh, mini char siu bao in Singapore The one with uh, not very thick skin and a very good sweet uh, char siu hearty pork filling So we drove all the way here to Gilamart Road to get the best which is Tanjong Ru <laughs> These little goodies are 90 cents a piece and so yummy the one big pile in there is the regular steamed pork bun with a bit of egg inside, also very delicious. It's been years since I've had Tanjong Ru Pao, Cha Su Pao, Mini Pao. Here goes. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. Winning taste. Irreplaceable taste, actually. Unbelievable. Very nice. It goes well with tepe. Okay, yeah, so Vitali's tried, uh, I think, Nam Ki Pao and Jambaru Pao and Tanjong Ru Pao. This is your favorite? Yeah. But he says this is his favorite. Whilst we were there, Vitali also tried out the pork rib noodles with those nice juicy fat black Chinese mushrooms being sold randomly right next door and they were actually really good too and they cost just $4.50. How reasonable is that? Okay, so when you're in Singapore, aside from checking out the centre and MBS, which is all very futuristic and modern, the other side of Singapore is actually super interesting, which is our heritage houses and traditional architecture, like the five walkways and amazing like old homes such as these that you see right here. 
A lot of these are in the style of Chinese courtyard houses, often with colourful Peranakan tiles and other decorative details, very stylish and delightful. P.S. I'm not the only one in love with our heritage shop houses. Check out this Peranakan shop house facade going on in Changi Airport Terminal 4's Heritage Zone. Little things like this really makes me feel so proud of Singapore, our heritage and our fantastic airport management. Okay, so it's our last night in Singapore. I'm already feeling a bit sad to be going tomorrow, but for our last night fiesta, we decided to come to Block 85 Hawker Centre in Bordeaux. And I'm so happy because it's actually 9 o'clock, but it's still really bustling here with good atmosphere and a lot of things look open and very good. Let's go! <laughs> Block 85 Hawker Centre is famous for its bak chor mee, minced pork noodles. So of course Vitali ambles up for an order. There's a couple of competing stalls selling this dish, but I think they're all good. A quick stop off at one of the local drink stalls, and Vitali comes back to me bearing a giant gift. So Vitali just rocked up with this, and I was like. <laughs> This is so huge! Uber Chow sugar cane juice with lemon. One of the authentic Singaporean goodies. Really like this. Haven't really seen this anywhere else. Drinking a lot of this while I'm in Singapore. Hmm. How much did this cost? Four twenty. Four dollars twenty cents. Oh my god, inflation is really hitting Singapore. <laughs> Food's ready! <laughs> Check out those steaming hot noodles tossed in savoury, tangy, spicy seasonings. At the bottom, there's minced pork, pork lard, and mushrooms. Okay, the noodles are really good. Like, it's really cute, cute. Very nice. There's also soup with minced meat and meatballs on the side. All chewy and juicy and overall very satisfying. One tray of such minced pork goodness sets you back only 5 Singapore dollars and 50 cents. A total bargain. Ooh, time for me to run off to pick up my last chance to indulge on this Singapore trip. Yep, you guessed it. A final plate of chao kuei tiao again. Oh, smells good. Full of pork again. Uh, a bit of the sambal. A lap chow. So good. Mm. Okay, so we've had a ridiculous number of plates of chakadel on this trip back because that is absolutely my favorite Singaporean food that I miss a lot when I'm overseas. But actually, to my great surprise, I think this plate tonight is the best plate we've had this trip. Admittedly, though, I like Hill Street chakadel very much, but the long queue is a bit too long. We haven't had a lot of time. We've been rushing around like mad dogs. So we haven't been there. But outside of Hill Street, this one looks well. <laughs> my favorite Abolic store is still open. Yay! <laughs> okay, best treat in the world. I'm feeling here having my Abolic. And there's a live Chinese music performance in front of me. So cool. <laughs> On this trip, we've actually spent a lot of time in the CBD town centre area of Singapore because um, we were shooting quite a few videos there and we had a lot of errands to run there. But it also made me realise that the part of Singapore that actually I love best is really in the heartlands. You know, walking around in the HDB areas where everything is so nicely planned and it's green and it's not too congested but very simple living kind of environment and like eating all the good food in the hawker centers because seriously the food there is still the best the food courts can't match it 
Ayam food court. Oh my god, what a nightmare. <laughs> I'm never going there again. It was so expensive and so bad. Um, but yeah, so then it kind of all made me realize one thing, and which is that, like, I'm a kampong girl at heart, through and through. <laughs> you know, I like the kampong lifestyle in Singapore the best. And maybe that's why I like living in Bali because, you know, it's an even more kampong version of my kampong lifestyle here. But basically, like, you know, I've left Singapore, I've left the fancy bits of Singapore behind, especially for kampong life overseas. But yeah, you know, wherever I go, even when I'm back here, I will still feel the most comfortable in my kampong environment. So you can take the girl out of the kampong. But I think you cannot take the kampong out of the girl. <laughs> okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this little vlog of ours here in Singapore. It was kind of like impromptu, like, you know, filming. But it's a real little slice of our lives here as we are traveling. Thank you for staying with us. See you next Saturday. Yeah.